Welcome to Thoroughwood Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak. TGIF, it's Friday, and we've got nine races on our program today at Gulfstream. And we've got carryovers in both the Rainbow Six. That's going to start in race number four today. And the Super High Five, which will be in our final race of the day. That's race nine on the nine race card. Let's get things started. Here are the track and weather conditions. The main track is fast and the turf course is firm. It's a beautiful day in Hollandale Beach. The first race on the card is a $12,500 claiming event. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races, will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. No scratches or jockey changes to report in the opener. Racing at Gulfstream to a picture-perfect beginning. Toward the inside, What's Up Kiddo gets the first call from Just Call Me Money, who comes away in second. Moving up on the outside, Gato Dorado is now third. They're two lengths better than the team of Oxendine and Houdat Double Cat, the two trailers June Flower and Dad's Little Girls. They take it to the far turn. On the inside, What's Up Kiddo leads by a neck. Up on the outside, Gato Dorado is now second, two lengths better than a rallying Houdat Double Cat. Then Just Call Me Money, followed inside by Dad's Little Girls. She gets inside of Oxendine and at the back of the pack, the trailer, June Flower. They're under the top of the stretch. Still many chances here and Just Call Me Money is now tackled by Gato Dorado. Swinging wide for the drive is Houdat Double Cat and Oxendine. Dad's Little Girls looks for room and Just Call Me Money held up between them. They're at the top of the stretch. Seven horses across the racetrack. Eighth of a mile to go. June Flowers come on from last to take the lead. Oxendine tries to stay with her second. Back third Houdat Double Cat. In deep stretch it's June Flower and Arnie Fontanez gamest of all. They win three parts of a length. Oxendine was second in front of Just Call Me Money third. It's a photo for fourth between dad's little girls and who dad double cat june flower splits horses to get up for the win in the first race arnie fontanez was aboard for trainer mohammed jehaludi and owners lisa's racing inc june flower paid 15 dollars to win that'll take us right to the second race a six thousand two hundred fifty dollar claimer three-year-olds and up which have not won three races or which have not won a race since january 10th of this year will be going a mile on the main track no scratches, but one jockey change. John Cruz will be aboard the seven T's two step. And they're up. Let it be famous from down toward the inside. Headstone moves up on his outside as let it be famous is floating out a bit out of the one mile shoot. On the stretch out, T's two step has speed. And then in between horses, it's furious shot as they run out of the one mile shoot. Headstone has a head in front, but let it be famous is down on the inside and racing second now from T's two step in third. Then it's my uncle Charlie and Royal Fighter. Furious Shot settles in second last, and the trailer is he spectacular, but he's only about six lengths behind. The opening quarter sharp, 23 and 2, moving right along on the front. Let it be famous by a half a length. Racing second is Headstone. Three wide out there is T's two step. Royal Fighter tugging, drafting behind the speed under Harry Hernandez. Just looks like he needs some place to go at the moment. Three better than he spectacular than my Uncle Charlie, and the trailer Furious Shot. They move to the far turn after a 46 and two half mile. With the lead, let it be famous, paying a stiff toll for the front, but maintains the advantage. From the outside, T's two step, Headstone is next. Now Hernandez gives the Royal Fighter a crack on the shoulder, and he doesn't have that same punch. He's moving closer, though. He's still only three lengths behind in front of Furious Shot and My Uncle Charlie, and he's spectacular, is tailed off, and they run to the top of the stretch. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. Let it be famous, trying to do it all the way. Went three quarters in 111 and two, and has a two and a half length lead. From the outside. Here's Royal Fighter trying to get after him second. Back third is T's two-step and they're into the stretch. Let it be famous. Shaken up for the drive by Manny Aguilar. Has an eighth of a mile more to get with a two and a half length lead. Royal Fighter is second. He's well clear of the others. Inside the 16th pole, it's let it be famous. And Manny Aguilar gate to wire to win it by two. Royal Fighter is second. It's a battle for third. Give it to T's two-step over Furious Shot in 138 and two. Let It Be Famous wires the field in the second race. Manny Aguilar was the winning jockey for owner and trainer Gary Jackson. Let It Be Famous paid $8.60 to win. Point of entry would not be denied. And they're into the stretch. Point of entry's taking the lead. Point of entry, a two-length lead. It's point of entry taking the lead. Point of entry will go to the Breeders' Cup. On a five-race winning streak. Five-time grade one winner from a deep Phipps family with a pedigree and physical to become the heir of Dinah Former. Point of entry. 
standing at Adina Springs. The third race is a $6,250 claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races, will be going a mile on the main track. One more jockey change, Eddie Castro will be piloting the six re-elected. They're up. Toward the rail, the gray Barry Blitz begins the best. Re-elected comes away in the top flight. Up on the outside, Rachel's girl is showing speed today. And emerging from between horses, here's Secret Fascination. So they run out of the one-mile shoot. No clear-cut leader yet. Now on the outside, re-elected in Castro. Poke ahead in front. Secret Fascination is moving up to challenge El Nath in the top flight. And Barry Blitz is away with speed. So the pace is slow early. Four horses across the track. Rachel's girl is fifth. Three lengths better than the team at the back, BL's Dream and Fee and Sugar. They won a 24 and two opening quarter time and a three to five. Barry Blitz leads it a half a length. Secret Fascination is there second. From between horses, El Nath is third, perched four wide, re-elected from fourth. Length and a half off the lead with five furlongs to go. The trio at the back, Rachel's Girl, Fee and Sugar, and BL's Dream. Past the half mile pole they go. They win an opening half mile in 48 seconds flat. Barry Blitz has the lead. Reelected comes to call on the outside second. El Nath is back third. Back fourth is Secret Fascination. The rest working hard at the back. So the two favorites square off. Barry Blitz has to quicken. Reelected is not. And Reelected just collared the leader under Eddie Castro. Moves a half in front at the 5 16 El Nath is now third. Rachel's Girl is now fourth. And they're at the top of the stretch. Reelected strictly the one to beat from there after three quarters in 112 and four. Shaken up for the drive and moves away a length and three quarters. Barry Blitz tries to fight back second. On the outside, and El Nath from third with an eighth of a mile to go. Re-elected, shrugs off the challenge from Barry Blitz and El Nath and moves away. It will be re-elected for Eddie Castro and Ronnie Werner to move away in the third race today. Win it off by three and a half, four lengths. The gray Barry Blitz is second from El Nath third and Rachel's girl fourth. Re-elected kicks clear for a four and a half length victory in the third race. Eddie Castro picks up the mount today and gets the win for trainer Ronnie Werner and owners Red Tail Ridge Racing Stables, LLC. Re-elected, paid $7 to win. On to the fourth race now, a $25,000 to $30,000 claimer. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races or three-year-olds, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the eight, Mochima. Also, Diego Gomez will be aboard the one, La Parcella. They're up. From the outside, Sweet Forestry. From the center, Miss Deja Vu with Polka Dot Bikini coming away to be second. Lasting Friendships is out of there racing in third. From between horses, that's Westbrook Sunset with Far From Here moving up. Far From Here rushing forward to be second now, chasing Miss Deja Vu. To the half mile pole they race and Miss Deja Vu has the lead. Westbrook Sunset is there, second up on the outside, Far From Here third. Polka Dot Bikini is now fourth from the outside. La Parcella tipped off the fence by Gomez to run on, then lasting friendships toward the inside. From the outside, second or third last in the early stages is Sweet Forestry in front of Rosa Mystica and the trailer, the trailer is Premier Dame. They're under the 5 16th and with the lead, it's still Miss Deja Vu by the opening quarter in 22 and four. La Parcella comes under the whip ride, Westbrook Sunset between horses. Four lengths more to lasting friendships, then to the rail and polka dot bikini. They won a 46 second half mile and Miss Deja Vu continues to lead. Miss Deja Vu on top by two and a half. From the outside, La Parcella, polka dot bikini and Westbrook Sunset are next. Final furlong still finding up top. Miss Deja Vu. La Parcella starts to gain ground in the late stages. Here's La Parcella getting on track to win it. La Parcella and Diego Gomez by a length. Miss Deja Vu second. Westbrook Sunset third. It's close for fourth between lasting friendships and Polka Dot Bikini in 111 and 2. La Parcella just gets by Miss Deja Vu to take the fourth race. Diego Gomez picks up this mount today and gets the win for trainer Margaret Worthington and owner Orlando Barrera. The fifth race is an $8,000 claimer, three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or which have not won a race since January 10th of this year will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the nine, that's your main track only participant double judge. Also, Harry Hernandez will be riding the five Cactus Kid. They're off. Bright guy was a step slow. From the inside, my brother Johnny A springs out to take the early lead from no lift shift, who's away racing in second. Help Arai is now in third. Up on the outside, Charlie in charge trying to drop over. He's fourth. He's a length better than Becky's kitten, who's now fifth. Global Glow to his outside. Second last in the early stages is Cactus Kid, and the early trailer is the gray bright guy. They run around the first turn, chasing Jimmy Vale on my brother Johnny A, who leads it by a length and three quarters. 
Racing second is no lift shift. While on hold here for Gonzalez, from third is the favorite help arrive. Into the outside, Charlie in charge. Becky's kitten from down toward the inside. Global glow between horses, the team at the back, Cactus Kid and Bright Guy. They carved a quarter in 24 and two. My brother Johnny A, still there, still comfortable. Two and a half on top. Racing in second is no lift shift. Help Arias third is the favorite. Toward the inside, Becky's Kitten continues to progress with an inside journey. Charlie in charge is now back fifth, a half in front of Global Glow, then Bright Guy and Cactus Kid. They're separated by seven lengths with three furlongs left to go. They went through the opening half mile in 48 seconds flat. My brother Johnny A, confronted now by no lift shift. Global Glow's into the clear and coming on from third. Help Arrive will need to do better. Becky's Kitten on the inside. Bright Guy from last tries to put in a charge, and they're at the top of the stretch. No lift shift has the lead. Global Glow to the attack on the outside, second by three quarters in 112 flat. Jonathan Gonzalez shakes up no lift shift, but up on the outside it's Global Glow and Brandon Boulanger pushing past. Global Glow now has the lead, and it's an upset to kick off the pick five. Global Glow at 12 to 1. No lift shift second, close for third. Maybe Cactus Kid over Charlie in charge in 130 and 1. Global Glow outduels no lift shift and draws off in the fifth race. Brandon Boulanger was the winning jockey for trainer Lonnie Arterburn and owner Lindsay Molina. Global Glow paid $26.60 to win. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. The sixth race is a $50,000 maiden claimer. Two-year-olds will be sprinting five furlongs on the main track. Scratch the six, Forever D. Also, Edgar Zayas will be aboard the five, Imperial Warrior. They're up. Alex, the dude, stumbled and unseated the rider. The eight is out of the race. For the front, it's the Wesley Ward trainee, Bottle Walk, who throttles open quickly now. Opens a five-length lead in a hurry now. Everybody else wondering what happened. Three-star stone on the inside with title fight. Then from between horses, donation, Imperial Warrior wide on the outside. Two lengths back to the team of Street Brilliant and Gumalev. And this is all Bottle Walk right now. Bottle Walk's turning in this to a walk. He went 22 and three-quarter time. He had the 5 sixteenths on top by seven. Trying to make a race of it here is title fight from between horses to be second. Toward the inside, three star stone is next, and they run to the top of the stretch. Now John Cruz goes to work on bottle walk. The strides are shortening a bit, but still has a five length lead. From the inside, three star stone from between horses, a late run coming now from donation and title fight. Now bottle walks on the ropes, trying to get home here. Him from between horses coming on late is title fight toward the inside, three star stone. Here's title fight at bottle walk. I mean, outside, it's donation, it's title fight. Title fight got the victory from donation second. Hold all tickets, there'll be an inquiry into the start of the race. They covered the course in a minute and three. Title fight gets up to take the sixth race, breaking his maiden in his career debut for trainer Stephen DeMauro. Juan Leva was the winning jockey for owners Kenwood Racing LLC. Title fight, he's Florida Sire Stakes eligible and he paid $9.80 to win. Race seven is a $12,500 claiming event Three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races, will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. One more jockey change to note, Eduardo Nunez will be aboard the six Sneaky Kitten. And they're up to a level beginning. Toward the inside, Dramatist begins nicely. Up on the outside, here's the gray. Do the roar up to challenge. Ray's back is there, and Centard from the inside is Gukumats. These three are quickest with Do the Roar in front today, in front of half a length from Ray's back. Second, Gukumats is now third. From between horses and racing fourth, Acapaquito with Sneaky Kitten on the outside. Saving ground is Dramatist in front of All About Diva, who's off the speed. Ultimate Choice is next, and Smoky Bird is the trailer as they run around the far turn. Toward the inside, Do the Roar. Toward the outside, Ray's back. They're five lengths better than the rest. Led by Sneaky Kitten who's trying to get around Gukumats. Dramatist is on the inside. All About Diva picks the path and Smoky Bird is last and they're at the top of the stretch. Do the roar shake it up for the drive with a length and a half lead. Back to second is Ray's back from the back. Sneaky Kitten and All About Diva are rolling but Do the Roar still has plenty in reserve. Hop the tire tracks there but is four in front. It's Do the Roar in front. 
do the roar by four. Second, Gukamats. It's close for third. Raise back. A bit erratic lady might have hung on over a hard charging all about Diva. Do the roar strides out nicely in the seventh race. Jose Alvarez was the winning jockey for trainer Antonio Chiaffi and owner's Just for Fun Staple LLC. Do the Roar paid $18 to win. Race 8 is a $6,250 claiming event. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races or three-year-olds, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the seven, Venom Girl, also Harry Hernandez, will be aboard the two, Gotcha Key. And they're up. Thanks, Bob. From the outside, that's Trumpet's Eminence who gets the first call. Gotcha Key moves up to be second. From the outside, Can Can Ladies away in early third. Down to the inside, it's Kayla's Song with Starship Cosmo. The favorite comes away fifth. Zamorata is next, then front cover Dream. And far back in the early stages, the trailer is appealing beauty. They make their way down the backstretch, and Trumpet's Eminence is cleared now by a length and a quarter. Kayla Song up on the outside to be a joint second with Gotcha Key. Then it's a stretch of two and a half lengths back to Can Can Lady. The favorite Starship Cosmo has work to do. Asked to quicken by Carabao, four lengths from it. Then Zamorata in front cover Dream, and Appealing Beauty is still last, and Trumpet's Eminence is still first. Trumpet's Eminence goes to the quarter pole in front. Gotcha Key rebids well second. Kayla Song is now third. Starship Cosmo with an inside lane tries to pick a path, and they're at the top of the stretch. It's Trumpet's Eminence in front, off the fence. Here's Starship Cosmo, favorites into the clear with an opportunity toward the inside and Gotcha Key with an eighth of a mile to go. Starship Cosmo continues with momentum in the center and she has the lead. Zamorata with a late say on the inside. She'll get into second, but Starship Cosmo is a winner. It's Starship Cosmo striding clear by three and a half. Zamorata second, Trumpet's Eminence third and Gotcha Key fourth in 111 and one. Starship Cosmo runs down the front runners to take the eighth race. Jose Caraballo was the winning jockey for trainer Michael Petro and owner Frank Calabrese. Starship Cosmo paid $3.20 to win. The ninth and final race of the day is a $12,500 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds and up will be going a mile on the turf course. Scratch the four, cool man loot. Also, Pedro Monterey Jr. will be aboard the three, Gran Caballero. There are two alive here to take down the entire Rainbow Six pool. And runners away. From the center, metaphorically gets the first call down to the inside. Here's Whitfield's return moving up and Whitfield's return with inside position and the lead as they head into that first turn run. Caught wide on the turn, both Senshi and Taloa. Also away in the top flight here is Rememorar as they run around that first turn. It is Whitfield's return in front. Rememorar is second, metaphorically tucked in. Senshi is next. Up on the outside is Taloa, length and a half in front of Empire Road. Don Terso Q is next. Stretch of another two and a half lengths back to Wild and Wild to the outside of I Want to Be a Stormcat. Another three to They Came to See Me, then DeLambert and Gran Caballero is last of all as they chase the speed of Whitfield's return through a 23 and three opening quarter. Senshi is three wide, four wide out there. Taloa from between horses, Rememorar, Panici and Metaphoric sneak through on the inside. Meanwhile, Edgar Zayas and Empire Road are now five wide on the course as they head to the far turn. Don Terso Q and I want to be a stormcatter next. Things getting tight in that second flight. Remember, I took the worst of it. They came to see me as down toward the inside from the outside trying to get underway as wild and wild, and they run to the top of the stretch. 47 and one for a half mile, and with the lead, Whitfield's return still there. From the outside, metaphorically tries to get after him second. I want to be a stormcat. 25 to one and in touch from third, then Empire Road. Three quarters, 112 and 1, and they're at the top of the stretch. Metaphorically, comes to confront Whitfield's return on the top. Three lengths more do I want to be a Stormcat. Late run inside from Wild and Wild. There's an eighth of a mile to go now. And with the lead, it's metaphorically, I want to be a Stormcat. Continues to charge at the leader. Back third is Whitfield's return. Metaphorically digging, I want to be a Stormcat. Can't reach him. Metaphorically wins. 
by a length. I want to be a Stormcat second, Empire Road third, then Whitfield's return. It's a photo for fifth between Wild and Wild, and they came to see me in 137 and three. Metaphorically holds off I want to be a Stormcat to take the ninth race. I want to be a Stormcat was one of two alive here to take down the Rainbow Six, but instead metaphorically gets the victory. Luca Panici was in the irons for trainer Steve Town and owners Bailey Livestock, LLC. And speaking of payoffs, here are the payoffs from our exotic wagers today. The pick 444 paid $338.60. There will be a $50,000 guaranteed jackpot pool in tomorrow's late pick four. The pick five, four of five, paid $38.30. Five of five, paid $5,238.85. There will be a $50,000 guaranteed jackpot pool in Saturday's pick five. And the Rainbow Six, there was no single winning ticket. Six of six paid $4,877.28. There will be a $150,000 guaranteed jackpot pool in the Rainbow Six on Saturday. That's going to do it for Friday's card. We will roll right into the weekend here at Gulfstream with an 11 race program on Saturday. Keep an eye out for the sixth race. It's a maiden special week for two-year-old fillies. They're going to be sprinting five furlongs on the main track. This race includes a filly that will be debuting for the Wesley Ward Barn. Her name is Mo Nose. She's a daughter of Uncle Mo, who is just doing exceptionally well as a young sire. Four of his 13 starters have been winners. That is a 31% win clip. And this filly is a half sibling to the grade two stakes winning Peyton Deora. Not only that, she has the pedigree, she also has the connections. Trained by Wesley Ward and owned by former Denver Bronco and New England Patriot Wes Welker. So this should be a fun filly to watch. And of course, there'll be plenty of other great action throughout the card. I'll see you right back here tomorrow at Gulfstream. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action. I'm Katie Stazak.